Hi everyone, today I will be introducing Postman Flows, a visual drag and drop interface that simplifies building, testing, and sharing API powered applications. In this video, we will create a simple weather application to demonstrate how you can design and trace an entire API workflow in just a few steps. We're going to start building within our workspace. First, I'll make sure my collections and environment variables are ready to use within my Postman flow. In this workspace, I have two collections as well as an environment variable file that includes things like my API keys. To enable flows, I can click on the Configure Workspace sidebar button on the left-hand side, and I can scroll down within my Configure sidebar and then toggle on flows. Now I should see flows within the left-hand side of my sidebar. To create a flow, you can click on Create a Flow, the plus button, or the new button, and then flows, which will open up a blank canvas for your first flow. Now let's start building. We'll create flows by adding, configuring, and connecting blocks on the Postman Flows canvas. Blocks send requests, process data, and allow you to visualize your results. And every flow begins with a start block. We will connect the start block to a send request block. And within the send request block, we will select the collection that we're interested in, as well as the API within that collection. In this case, I'm going to select my longitude and latitude API. This API requires two variables, my API key and location. These er variables are already saved within my environment. I can go ahead and select my environment, and now I should be able to run this flow and see the successful output as so. Here I can see the data that it's returned. Now we want another send request block to fetch our weather data. One way to do this is go to the block menu at the bottom and find the block we're interested in, or we can click directly within the canvas and find the block, or we can go to our collection and find the API that we're interested in and drag that directly onto our canvas. We want this weather data API to receive the longitude and latitude from our position stack API that's already on our canvas. We can use the success output from our position stack API and connect that to the latitude and the longitude data within our open weather API. From here, we can go ahead and select the data we're interested in. For example, for latitude, we can go into our body, our data, and find our latitude and we can do the same thing for our longitude as well. We have one more variable for our time zone that we're interested in creating a variable within our canvas for. To do that, we can go ahead and click on create variable and we can name this variable time zone. We can give this variable a string value and now we can go ahead and click on get variable and get the variable that we just created on our canvas. When we run this flow, you should see the blocks execute in sequence, returning your daily weather for your particular location. We have data from this API, such as our max temperature and our wind speed, that we can go ahead and build some interesting dashboards for. Now that we've successfully run our API, we want to select some data that we can display in a dashboard. To do this, we want to select some data within a list by using the list block. Let's go ahead and add the list block to our canvas. And from here, we can select some data from our success output of our weather API. So within the first element of our list, we can use the select button to select some data from our success output. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and select the daily maximum temperature. In our second element, I'm going to go ahead and select the daily minimum temperature. And within our third element of our list, I can also select the daily time.
Now that I have these three elements selected, I can connect the output of this list to a display block. So I'll go ahead and search for the display block and I can toggle this to be a bar chart. So now when I go ahead and run my flow, I should see the following data being displayed as a bar chart, which shows me the maximum and minimum temperature based on time. Another way we can select some data is directly from the output of our success block. So for example, if we wanted to display something like our wind speed, we can directly take the data that we're interested in and drag it directly into our canvas. And now we can connect that to a display block and display this data as a gauge. So if we run this flow, you should be able to see what that dashboard looks like. We can also run some more complex logic by using the evaluate block. The evaluate block is a powerful tool which allows you to work with a lot more complex logic and it uses the flow query language or TypeScript to work with some data. So we'll go ahead and add our evaluate block and we'll set a variable called wind speed. And we want to select our wind speed data and we want to evaluate that this data is less than 50. Now we can go ahead and add a display block to display our results. So there you have it. We have our entire flow. We have our send request blocks as well as our displays. In summary, we learned how we can use flows to sequence our data. We learned how to work with collections and drop requests into our canvas. We worked with variables as well as our evaluate block. Let's go ahead and use groups to organize this flow. To work with groups, you can click on the command button and select the blocks that you're interested in grouping together. So in this case, I want to group both my send request blocks and I'm going to go ahead and group the selection. I can name this group requests and I can create another group for my displays. So I'll go ahead and select my three display blocks and group those. I can also work with colors within our block. So let's, for example, we want to change the color of our list block. We can do that and annotate all of our various different data blocks. We can add some text into our canvas to add some annotations. So this allows us to share this flow with our colleagues and this gives them more information about what each piece of the flow is doing. And that's a wrap on creating our first flow. I hope this video helps you get started with working with flows. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more Postman related content. Thanks for watching.